Hello, welcome. This is Jennifer, and I'm thankful you're here. Today, I am sharing with you some ideas of creating faux dimension on one layer cards. And this will also share lots of tips about masking. Now, I have several examples for you. Each has a different uh, way of approaching this kind of one layer faux dimension. And I'm hoping that you can try this with products you have on hand. I will be demonstrating the technique with stamps, stencils, and dies. Let's get started with this first example. Believe it or not, this is super smooth and gives the look of dimension thanks to masking. I will be using the newest Gina K Designs Master Layouts die set. It's number 12. I love her Master Layouts because there's lots of great, useful, helpful layering dies. You'll see me use a couple other Master Layout sets later in this video. This one has these two large ornate frames and dies that create layering pieces to go in the center of them. So many ways you can use this. You can see here, I'm just gonna put some of these layering dies together, how you can really form a great card front with lots of layers to it, and then create a focal point at the center. However, I thought I would stretch this die set and show how you can create the look of dimension without doing all of those layers. The key to this is to use masking paper. I really like Gina K Designs Masking Magic. I find it's a great product that you can reuse several times and I'll show some of the perks of it in this video, but you could definitely use whatever masking paper you have. I'm starting out with a four and a quarter by five and a half inch top folding white note card. And I cut a piece of the Masking Magic paper to put on the back of it. It's cut slightly bigger than the note card, so it just protects the back of my card as we do a lot of inking. This is a trick I do often, but I don't talk about much in videos, and you'll see me do it more throughout this video. I also cut the large filigree die from that Master Layouts 12 set from a piece of masking paper, and here I'm removing the release paper. I want to put that at the center of my card, but I want to make sure it's straight. So here I just have a four and a quarter by five and a half inch piece of white cardstock, and I'm cutting that same die from the center of it. And I'm holding this on the front of our note card, and this will just be a template to place my delicate masking paper die cut into. So by putting this right into that opening, I know that it'll be straight and centered on the front of our card. There are many ways you can do this, I just felt that was easiest to get the best results. Now I'm using the release paper from the Masking Magic and laying it over that mask die cut and pressing along that with my bone folder. By putting that release paper over it, I can be sure I don't mess up the Masking Magic die cut and it'll be nice and smooth. So all I have here is a four and a quarter by five and a half inch top folding white note card with that masking paper die cut on the front and a piece of masking paper on the back to protect it from getting inky. Now I'm placing my card onto the all to new sticky grid mat. This will just hold it in place as I do my inking. You'll see me do this in a few different ways throughout this video. Over the front of the card, I am applying a light amount of Gina K Designs Sea Glass ink. This is one of my favorite colors. You could use any inks you want to here. I'm trying to do the Sea Glass ink darker on the outside edge and then lighter on the inside. We're gonna add some stamping there in the center, some stenciling, so I want it to be a little lighter there. It also gives the look of dimension when you do this. Now over this, you could stamp, stencil, do whatever you want, and I chose to do layering stencils. The layering stencils I'm using are from this new Vintage Summer Card Kit from Gina K Designs, which includes everything you see here. That's two large 6x8 stamp sets, a coordinating die set, three layering stencils, and then there is this free die set over there on the right that you get with the kit. I like Gina's kits because there's a huge variety of products in it, so you can create cards with different looks very easily. So I'll be using this kit and the many pieces throughout this video. So here are the layering stencils in that kit. There are three stencils and they are very easy to line up. You just line up the corners each time and you get a really fun layered look. This would be a great one for techniques, but I will just be using these layering stencils over that mask. So this is why I place my note card on the Altenew sticky mat. It will hold my stencil there. You can see how the stencil kind of suctions to it, holding it in place so that you don't have to worry about it shifting as you ink. 
Over the stencil, I am applying Gina K Designs Jelly Bean Green Ink, and then I did put a little bit of Lucky Clover on there. However, I didn't really see that very well, so I decided to come in with Pine, which is a darker green, and just put a little bit of that at the base of the leaves and on the stems, not spending a lot of time to blend here. The ink will dry together nicely, Really, you don't need to spend much time when you're doing layering stencils. The stencils and the ink will do the work for you. All right, so now it's time for the next stencil. I think I'm doing these out of order, but it really doesn't matter because these are actually stencils that build an image instead of layer. So you're building up the color around each other. Now over this one, I'm putting turquoise sea, which is a little bit darker than that sea glass color. And you'll notice I'll put this down by rotating left and right. The more you kind of change up how you apply that ink, you will get better results because it gets in the nooks and crannies. Now I'm coming in with a, the darker tranquil teal and adding that at the base of those petals. Now it's time for the third stencil and I'll line that one up, press it onto the sticky mat. And over this, I'll do that tranquil teal once again. This is the darkest of the colors. And there are little dots on the stencil and I'm covering that up with that extra piece of release paper there, just masking it off. So I can do those little dots with a different color. But first, I want to give the look of dimension to these flower buds. So I'm putting a light amount of In the Navy, which is a dark navy color, at the base of those buds. This will help to give the look of dimension in the final result of our card. Now for those little dots that the stencil has, I'm using the sea glass ink and putting it down heavier than I did on the background, just to add a little pop of color here and there. Now after removing the stencil, I decided I wanted a little bit more darker color at the base of the petals of those three largest flowers. So I'm going back to that stencil, it's very easy to line up, and I'll take that tranquil teal and add a heavier amount of that at the base of the petals. So this will make it pop even more since those little buds that we inked dark have a lot of dark color to them. Now I can remove that masked die cut. You could definitely be more careful than I was if you want to reuse it. I'll actually share some tips for creating reusable delicate uh, masks like this later in the video. But for now, I just remove that and then I can remove the masking paper that we had on the back of our card. Notice the back of our card is perfectly white. We don't have any ink where we don't want it. And I'll save that piece of masking paper to use over and over again. All right, now at this point, I didn't know how to add a sentiment to this, so I thought it'd be fun to die cut a little circle window at the center of our frame. So I'm using my T-roller to make a little mark at the halfway point, both vertically and horizontal. And where those two little marks cross, that's the center of my card. So I'm placing that circle die right there around that little mark that I made. Now you could definitely eyeball this if you wanted to, but I didn't want to mess up at this point, so I wanted to make sure this was as close to center as possible. I'll open this up and run it through my die cut machine, and now we have a small window at the center of our card. I'm placing that into my Misty stamping tool and stamping a sentiment that says, you make me smile, from the Gina K Designs So Many Sentiment stamp set. You'll see me use that later again in this video. Now I have plenty of room on the inside to write a message around that sentiment at the center. But first, I wanted to add a little more color on those outside edges of my card. So I'm just taking those little dots from the stencil and moving them around and adding sea glass ink over it so that there's more of these dots here and there. You could definitely add gemstones to this, but I wanted to make it a smooth one layer card. At this point, I felt like I wanted something darker at the center for the focal point. So I created a slightly smaller circle die cut from Navy cardstock, and I white heat embossed the same sentiment on it. I'll just put some liquid glue on the back of this and place it right into that window. It'll cover up that first black sentiment we created. I just felt that this darker color made it pop more, made it the focal point. Now this is still a one layer card, right? There's a window to it, but I didn't add any dimension to it. And we have a lot going on. So if you like making cards with a lot of interest to them, you can still create a one layer card. If you like the look of dimension, but you want it to be smooth, just use masking. 
By the way, if you want that filigree frame that we masked to stand out even more, I would recommend putting a little darker ink around the frame. It'll give that look of dimension, but I wanted to keep the center of this a little bit softer. So many ways you could do this technique. Now let's go ahead and do another example. This time there's no window on the card, but I'll show you how to create a, a bit of color that looks like you matted your card, but really it's just a one layer note card. This time I'm using another master layouts die set. This is number five. I'm telling you these master layout die sets are really useful. Lots of great layering dies that can be used so many times. So I have a white note card that is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. On the back of that, I'm putting again that piece of masking paper just to protect the back of my card while we do all of this inking. Now, before I had mentioned that I have a tip if you are creating any kind of mask with really delicate parts. The trick here is to layer two pieces of masking paper together. This will make it stronger so that you don't have to worry about those little intricate pieces. So here I'm taking two pieces of masking magic, sticking them together, and then I will trim that down to be slightly smaller than my note card. So this is four by five and a quarter inches. I will then take that window die from the master layouts die set and cut that right at the center of the masking paper. So this is two layers of masking paper together. So those little intricate areas in the window, that will be stronger and you don't have to worry about it ripping or moving on you as you do your inking. Also, it is a little bit stronger so you can reuse this piece over and over again. Now, normally you can use a single layer of masking magic over and over again, but if there are really intricate parts, it is good to double it up. So now I have that mask on the front of my note card, and this is going to be ready to do lots of inking. And remember the mask is slightly smaller than the note card itself, so there will be inking that will go on the outside edge and in that window. Towards the top half of the card, I'm applying Gina K Designs Medium or Orchid ink, and on the bottom half, I'm doing medium and dark lilac ink. I love these two colors, especially together. I am making sure to overlap the colors there towards the top center because that will give us a better blend. So notice I'm inking inside of the window and the edge of the card. You'll see a little piece of white sticking out the bottom of the card. That is the masking paper I put on the back of the card to protect it from all of this messy inking that I'm doing. All right, so once I've applied that ink down, it's time to do some stamping. I'll be using this six by eight stamp set that's included in the kit that I showed you earlier. Again, there's a great variety of products in that kit. Now to stamp this on our card, I'll first remove that masking paper on the back of the card. We don't need that right now. I'm not doing any more inking. And I'll take my card and stick it onto my Brutus Monroe stick and stamp mat. That'll hold it there inside of our Misty stamping tool. I'll take a scrap of my masking magic paper and put it over this edge here because I plan to stamp in that window, but my stamp is so big it'll hang over the edge and I don't want the stamping on the edge of the card. So I'll take this image and I just want that little ground area, not the palm trees from this image. I'm gonna actually put two images together here. I'm taking another piece of masking magic, a scrap, to mask off where that palm tree there at the top would stamp in our window. Again, I only want the ground. I'll stamp this with Gina K Designs Black Amalgam Obsidian Ink. This is a great dark black ink that can be used with any mediums that we might like. But here I'm just stamping it over that window. Now remember, I did masking paper too thick. It's still thin because that's the joy of masking magic is it's very thin so you can stamp up against it and get crisp edges. But I did two layers together, so I'm making sure that I'm stamping firmly to get into those little edges of the masking paper. Another thing you can do is take a Sharpie, this is just a black Sharpie, and go right along the edges of the masking paper so that we get those crisp edges. Really, there are many ways you can do this, but I found this to be the best way for this particular design. All right, so now I'll remove that masking paper piece and I will place on it this other large palm tree image. And I'm putting it as high as I can to fill as much of that window space as I can. Once again, I'll stamp this with that black ink. Notice when I stamp it, the ink doesn't get right up against the edges of that masking because I did two layers thick. 
Another thing I could have done, but didn't think of it at the time, would be to remove one layer of that masking paper and leave one layer on my card. Then it would have stamped right up against the edges. But I didn't think of that at the time. So here I'm using a black Sharpie just to go along the edges of the masking paper and it works great. Once I'm done with that, we can add little birds. These bird images are included in the same set. I love little bird images like this because you can use them with a variety of scenes you do. Here I have this kind of, uh, I don't know, tropical scene, but you could use those birds with like a lake scene if you have other stamps. Just fun to add to the sky to kind of fill in some spots. I'll remove my card from the sticky mat by curling the mat away, and then we can remove that extra white masking paper strip from the side. Before I remove our main mask, I'm going to spray the entire card front with this glitter dust. It adds like a silver glitter dust on it. It's so much fun, great sparkle, and wonderful for a one layer card like this. So I took it outside, sprayed it over the mask. Now I can remove my mask carefully and I can reuse that a few more times. And there we have a one layer card that looks like it has lots of dimension. Now this design could be great with a variety of different shapes there for that mask in the center, but I do think this window is really cool. All right, now for a sentiment, I'm again using that So Many Sentiment stamp set, and I chose a little thank you. I put a piece of clear packaging over my card to stamp on first to make sure I liked my positioning of that sentiment because I didn't want to mess up at this point. Now I'm stamping it directly on my card now that I'm sure that it's in the good spot. All right, so here we have our one layer card with the look of dimension. It looks like it's matted there, but really it's all one layer, a one layer note card. Now here's a little tip. If you do masking and you accidentally get some ink where you don't want it, just use a white gel pen to go over it. I didn't really have any problems, but I did want to demonstrate this in case it's something that you run into. Masking Magic is has like a coating on it that keeps ink from seeping through it, but other masking papers may not have that, so you might have some ink going through it. Now here is another one I made on the right. I didn't do that outside edge, but I plan to finish that card off later. I just used sea glass and the lilac inks on that one, just to show you that different color combinations will give different looks. Okay, so here I have the final card. Look at that sparkle, isn't that fun? I love it, it doesn't really rub off, it dries very quickly. There is a gold to that, but I use this silver quite often. I've used it in videos many times. There you can see that fun masking that we have. It looks like there's an actual dimension on this card, but there isn't. So this will be really easy to mail and you can make multiples because we have that mask ready to go. Okay, this time I have an example with a lot of bold color, which really helps to give that look of dimension. And we have the window set at the center. You'll see me change my mind along the way as I create this card, which is something I do often, but I wanted to make sure I included today. Off screen, I die cut the large circle filigree frame die from a piece of masking magic. You could double up layers if you want it to be reusable, but I only plan to use it once today. I'm using the negative space on the front of my card to make sure I place my masking magic die cut right in the center of it. It's just helpful in getting it lined up, making sure it's not a little wonky, but basically I'm just sticking the mask onto the front center of a four and a quarter by five and a half inch white note card. And again, I've put masking paper on the back of it so I don't have to worry about it getting inky. And thank goodness I did because I had ink on my desk and there's ink on that masking paper on the back and also here on the front, see that? Thankfully, I had that extra masking paper there. I'll clean up my desk and now I know I'm good to go. Okay, next I die cut a circle from that same die set. This has faux stitching on the inside edge, and I'm just temporarily adhering that to the center of our card to block off that opening in the center. You could have used masking paper for that, but I had this white cardstock circle already, so I just decided to use it. Using a little temporary adhesive behind it will hold it in place. Now this time I'm putting a heavy amount of ink down. I'm using dark lilac color, and then I'll end up using some blue raspberry on the top. I'm putting this down as heavy as I can so we can have a lot of contrast between this bold color and the white masking we have underneath. Once I've finished all of that inking, I will re carefully remove that circle die cut from the center, and I will find an eraser to just erase away that temporary adhesive. 
Now here I just have a piece of scrap paper that I die cut the circle from and I'm lining it up over our card so that that circle is the only thing exposed there in the center. Now there are many ways you could have done this. I just had the scrap paper here. So I did the masking this way. And I applied the uh, orchid inks to the center. I tried to make it a little lighter towards the center and darker towards the edge, just giving more of that look of dimension. Next, I'll stamp a butterfly image from that same card kit from before. I love the detailed look of this butterfly. And I also stamped hello below it. And I'm stamping that right there in the center of that pink circle. And you can see my butterfly wings overlap with the blue, but that doesn't bother me at all. Now I'm going to heat set that because I don't want to smear any of this as I move on. Then I will take this outside and give a quick spray with that silver di glitter dust again. Let it dry for a couple minutes and then remove my mask. I could have been more careful to try to save that mask, but I didn't plan to reuse it today. I just like to hook underneath the masking paper with my uh, little craft knife here and it's easy to remove. So now we have a one layer card with the bold color on the outside, bold color in the inside, and that white masking around it. Now I originally thought I would leave this as is, as a one layer card, but I decided to do that trick I did before where I have a window at the center. So I found a circle die to cut out my butterfly circle here. Then I took a slightly smaller circle die to make it smaller. I'll cut that a little smaller and now glue that in the center. So this will give me a one layer card with no dimension to it, but we have the interest of that added window, which I think is really fun. If you want to do dimension, you could definitely pop that circle there in the center. Now, when I write my sentiment on this one, my personal message, I plan to kind of circle around that focal point on the inside. My mother-in-law used to do that on cards she sent to my daughter before she passed away. It was fun to read in a circle and I thought it would be cool to do here too. All right, so here's a closer look. Look at all of that sparkle. You've got the look of dimension, but really it's a perfectly smooth card and you have the fun window just to add a little bit of interest. If you wanted to step this card up a bit, you could have done some stamping on that blue area before you remove the mask. You could do stenciling, but I just wanted bold color with the focus on that butterfly. All right, I have one more example for you. This one is a great one with any dies that you may have, background stamps and more. So we're going to do just a little thin masking on this. Now this is the Gina K Designs Master Layouts 10 die set. I use this one a lot because all of those dies create layers to go together. So those two frame die cuts there, one is slightly smaller than the other and has faux stitching on it. I once again am doubling up my masking magic paper. You could definitely use one layer if you prefer, but I'm creating such a delicate mask that I thought it would be safe to use two together. I'll have lots of leftover masking magic scraps from all this that I'm doing, and I keep all of those scraps in a sleeve with all of my other masking paper. So whenever I need even the smallest piece, it'll be ready to go. So now I'm cutting the two frame dies together, one is inside of the other, and cutting that double layer of masking magic. And then I end up with this very thin frame. I will take the negative space piece and line it up over a four and a quarter by five and a half inch note card. And I'm making it so that opening there is like in the bottom right hand corner of the card. I'm just holding it there and then I will take the release paper off the back of our thin mask and place it into the opening. Again, that negative space will just help me to make sure I'm laying the mask down correctly, that it's not wonky as I lay it down because it is so thin. So it just pops in there like a puzzle piece. Once it's placed there, I will use a bone folder to make sure it's pressed down, but I don't like to go directly onto the mask itself because it may make it move a little bit. So I like to make sure that I'm very uh, careful with it or I put something over it to really press it down, or you can flip your panel or card over and rub the bone folder on the back of it, and that'll really press it down. So that way it'll be nice and smooth on the front of our card as we do our inking. Before I start inking, I will put that same piece of masking paper on the back of the card to protect it from getting ink on it. And now we can ink this up however we want. I'm again using the medium lilac color from Gina K Designs, and I will do kind of a blend of color. Now you could do any kind of inking that you want to here. I wanted to make this kind of a medium color, bold enough that you can see that thin white mask when we remove it 
but not so bold that you won't see the black stamping we put on top. Now in the center of that frame, I wanted to stamp this cute little bird from this stamp set. This is the six by eight stamp set, the other one that's included in the kit. You can see the butterfly I used on the last card. Now this is cool because there are coordinating dies even for the sentiments. I'm a big fan of dies that cut out sentiments and these are nice and small, so easy to add anywhere on a card. Now I didn't use those sentiments today, but I did want to show you that. So for now I'm using the bird. Now I'll place that bird and a hello greeting right into the center of the frame. I will once again stamp with black obsidian ink. This is super dark black. If you want it to stand out more, you could definitely do white heat embossing here, but I really like the look of that black on the color. All right, so I'm gonna heat set that because I don't want to smear it at this point. And then I want to add some stamping around this, but only around the frame, not on the inside of the frame. So I'll take the larger of the two frame dies and cut it from some masking paper and place that right on top of the frame that we have on there. So I'm protecting everything underneath it. I have taken out the mouse pad from my uh, Misty stamping tool and placing the stick and stamp mat on the inside. And then I will take the masking paper off of our note card so that I'll be able to place it on the sticky mat. I have a script background stamp from Gina K Designs and I will stamp this onto our card and I'll use the same ink colors that I use for the blended background. So I'll apply the darker lilac ink on the bottom portion of the stamp, then use a brush to soften the top edge so we don't have any harsh lines. And I'll stamp that over the mask. And I'll repeat that just to make it a bit darker. Then I will move up to the middle area and stamp a matching color there and then a matching color on the top. So it's really easy to ink up a stamp with multiple colors and get a blend if you use a blending brush to kind of smooth the edges of where the ink stops. Now I can remove my card from the sticky mat and then remove both of the masks. And there we have stamping around that frame portion. Now this you could change up in so many different ways. You could do different colors in different areas. You could do different stamps, different stencils. But I decided to keep this very simple with the stamping around our focal point frame. So this is a perfectly smooth one layer card. You could add some little accents to it, but I thought I'd leave it as is. I am considering putting that frame mask back over the bird and then spraying the outside with the silver glitter dust. So I might add that later on. But here you have the look of dimension. It looks like you layered that frame up, but really you just use masking. All right, I hope you give these ideas of faux dimension on one layer cards a try. I will link to a couple other related videos here at the end if you want to check them out. I will also link to everything that I featured today in my description below, but I hope you try this with products you have. Thanks so much for watching and I'll be back soon with another video.